everybody. My name is Jason Mosley and I'm the CEO of IBIS. Welcome to another exciting edition of, of IBIS Leading Lights. Today we're going to dive into the world of technology and we know certainly in the collision repair industry as a whole that the use of technology is rapidly increasing, particularly in these changing times that we're all experiencing. The need for, for technology um, is, is ever increasingly important. So I'm delighted to have with us today one of the True leading lights in our industry um, from Tradybot. I'm delighted to welcome Mario Dimovsky. Mario, welcome. Thanks, Jason. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you doing today, Mario? Yeah, pretty good considering the environment. Um, just adapting and um, yeah, learning to do business a new way. Absolutely. So, look, Mario, the first question is: you know, you're from Tradybot, CEO of Tradybot. Tell us a little bit about what Tradybot is, what you've been up to the last few years, um, and what you're currently involved in. Yeah, look, I mean, Tradybot is um, you know, an innovator, but also a fast follower of uh, uh, evolving technology, uh, immersive and digital technology that's uh, being used in other industries. And what we're doing is finding a way to actually implement and introduce into the collision space, you know, used for training or used for information delivery, especially specializing in augmented and virtual reality. AI, and what we've done in the last three to four years, we've built um, on existing businesses that we do have and clientele, uh, solving problems that they have, um, you know, within training, you know, within recruitment, within um, in engagement, um, you know, within process, you know, how, how do we, um, you know, introduce these technologies and um, new, um, you know, hardware um, technology offerings that are already being used in various other industries, especially evolving industries or bigger industries. So it's been an interesting and challenging um, in experience, especially ch changing that mindset of, of the you know, current industry. Though, you know, we're very lucky. We've got a great bunch of team. Um, you know, we're currently across three continents, um, Europe, US, and in Australia, New Zealand. So Tradybot at this stage is placed as um, you know one of you know the the leading probably um, innovators within the collision space. Uh, we are working with large scale clients, MSOs, um, trying to really solve problems that they have at the moment, but also just trying to see where the future is within um, these technologies. It's not a quick fix; it's a long haul. I um, mean, COVID has you know. Um, throwing a bit of a span in the works with those things. So we're trying to just juggle that whole scenario at the moment. Yeah. You mentioned something there, Mario, that I want, I just want to talk about a little bit more. Traditionally, the collision repair industry, let's say it's not been the, the, the foremost thing to quickly adopt technology. Um, how are you seeing that? Has that changed any any? Anything with COVID? Uh, are people starting to realise, look, you know, the old way of doing things may not be possible going forward? So I accept you've got the challenges of COVID, obviously, for whatever it is, but it's also, has it been some sort of probably positive effect in terms of changing cultural mindsets? Yeah, look, definitely. I mean, you know, um, you know, since COVID hit our sort of um, <laughs> inquiry, the rate's gone up, you know, 600%. You know, we're actually saying no to pretty serious customers because we're just focusing on, the client till we want. So everyone, everyone is starting to look at digital. But you've also got some of the leading big, big players, you know, in the industry now already doing a lot of stuff with digital, you know, estimating and so much so forth. So I think the shift that had already started to sort of take place and COVID has accelerated that. You know, everyone's, um, I mean, look at, uh, you know, so we, you know, even like, you know, what IBIS does now, you know, all your events have turned digital, you know, everyone's moving down that road. I mean, you know, your average day would have been meetings and, and doing things and lunches. And now it's, you know, Skype, Zoom, Hangouts. You know, it's it's all becoming, you know, this this digital interactivity. So the industry is adapt, is adopting to that, um, though there is still a big shift because it's not easy just to transform your whole operation from you know, a paper-based operation to a digital one, even though as much as you can see the benefits, it's, it's the transitional phase uh, that, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. So, so Mario, can you talk us through, let's say, for example, a specific project that you, you've been working on uh, with, with a major client? What sort of, just tell us practically where you're sort of rolling out this technology and give us a, a use case of, of where the, you talk about AI, where that's being used and, 
and the, and the benefits you're seeing with that. Can you give us a practical example? That'd be great. Yeah, look, I think a great example is uh, with New South Wales government and Freem and, and Exalta, uh, we are developing a, a pilot that we're about to roll out. And it was meant to roll, be rolled out actually um, a couple of months ago. And what we're doing is using virtual reality and we've developed consoles, which are like a gaming console. Um, and these consoles technically allow students to engage and try a skill, so a virtual skill, but it's spray painting, metal welding, plastic welding, and we're actually now also introducing many other skills in there. Now, post-COVID, we're actually going to have these consoles sent to a school where they had also, um, you know, an industry star with them that spoke about, you know, their journey from a tradie to a, wherever they are now and so on and so forth. But what actually COVID has, has made us do is now we're actually making these consoles contactless. We send, send the console via a, a, a career. They get to the school, they open it up, they have all the instructions and they try skills in their own environment, you know, within the classroom. We capture that, you know, and using AI, then we can assess, hey, you know what, has this user got the right skills to be a spray painter, to be a metal welder? So what I wanted to ask you then, Let's let's talk about a little bit about the demography of the industry. We we talk about young people attracting talent. It's it's been a common theme in our industry for a long time. Um, I, I'll, a question: Are your are your solutions being picked up by sort of all age groups? Is, are, are, is it not just the young people that are, that are sort of buying into this? Is everybody else more seeing the benefit of this technology? Yeah, look, definitely. The young people is who we're engaging with because I guess they're the ones that everyone's targeting now to develop new talent. Um, but these technologies are also going to be used for upskilling the current, say, workforce. So, yes, the engagement from a business and industry perspective, we are seeing that it's actually been, um, you know, there's an interest from everyone, even your traditional business people that like doing things the old way and it work. They're also now saying, hey, you know what, I understand and I recognise as a need for this digital transformation to happen in steps, of course. And I think the recruitment and training part, I see it, um, and information delivery, of course, is the first aspect of the transformation as it comes into our industry. Yeah. So just on that, on that point of, of, of the young talent, it, it has to, I'd be interested to get your view on this, but surely it has to have a, a benefit that seeing this really high tech stuff, this, this virtual reality, AI, it has to have an effect on the perception of our industry that's probably traditionally been a bit dirty, not very technologically advanced, not something I want to go into. With what you're doing, that's surely got to change the face of, of that um, in terms of how it's seen by people who, who are thinking about coming into the industry. Look, definitely, you know, what we're giving, you know, these, say, kids that we're, you know, that, that we're engaging with is the tools that they're already um, known to them, you know, VR sets, you know, they're gaming, they're playing, and even now part of the school offering, they're actually getting VR sets and the iPads and everything. So for us, the engagement level is, 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 is high because they all want to have a go. They want to throw on the VR set and spray paint a car and, you know, and get a top score in the school. So we've, we've included a lot of gamification in our platform, you know, and kids are competitive, you know, we're giving them that, that, that edge. But then the problem is once we've engaged them is then we want to keep that image the same. You know, we want to make sure that once there are in our in our grasp and saying, hey, now we want to put you into a, an apprenticeship, we want to make sure wherever they end up going is that same, you know, uh, um, dream we're selling them. You know, there's no point in you giving them all this great stuff and then you send them to a, you know, a, a collision shop that, for example, isn't you know, on the lines that we've been promoting. So there's a lot of back-end work being done that making sure that our partners in these projects have got the facilities that suit this vision. You know, because we've done some early research and we even spoke to apprentices that left their industry and they said, look, you know, went on to, you know, went onto the website, great company, looked amazing, rocked up at the shop and it was nothing what I thought it was. And a week later, I decided to leave that this wasn't for me. And this is a problem we have because... For business owners, they're working so hard and it's the way it's always been done. They don't really realise that, hey, you know what, kids expect more these days. And not just kids, all employees. You know, so if we're going to really attract talent, no matter if the kid's young or, you know, well, if we're transforming other trades into our trade, you know, I think it's important that, you know, the whole appearance of the industry is taken up a notch. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely.
One thing in the collision repair industry that's sort of steadfast, it's been a very, again, a very common theme over the, the last few years, is all about repair methods and, and following the right repair procedures, you know, reinstating the vehicle back to its original craft safety, uh, crash safety rating. Um, so, so important for our industry, duty of care, all that, all that stuff. Um, is, is AI virtual reality got a role to play in terms of repair methods? So some rather than traditionally looking on a website or printing out a repair method, where can we where can we look to in the future where, for example, maybe we you know we've got a VR headset, we're looking at the vehicle and it's it's mapping the repair method over for us. Where are we going with that, Mario? Is that is that something that's that's coming? Is it here? Where, where are we? Yeah, look, definitely. And look, there's, you know, there's, there's a bunch of leading companies that are doing a great job in this space in the sense of providing the methods and, you know, and, and, and as, as it's being done now. Um, I think the digital aspect is definitely coming. If you're looking from a perspective of using augmented reality and, you know, not even using glasses, probably just even a tablet where you can overlay and even a mobile phone and get information over that vehicle. Though, again, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're talking about a big catalogue, you're talking about a big transition, you know, there's there's um, a, a, an effort that needs to be done to see the end result. Though, as in other industries that are using this from aviation, you know, you're looking at where aviation is going now with a lot of their um, AR and remote sort of um, guidance, even the OEMs, if you look at some of the new OEM factories, they've got a heavy reliance on augmented reality from, you know, how to get information on manufacturing stuff and so on and so forth. So the future is, you know, I can predict, I reckon within the next two years to three years, most of the technicians on the floor will be using some sort of AR to actually receive information on repair and um, even certification and um, compliance and everything. Great, great. So um, another question I've got for you is, is around, you know, working with partners. You mentioned 3M, Max Alta. We work with those guys who are big supporters of IBIS. You know, how important it is to find the right partner with the right vision? Look, it's vital, you know, especially in today's age and especially with um, technology, it's important that you pick the right partner that understands the vision, not short term, but also long term. But also being across, you know, many countries, I think our partners actually change and we're working with um, various partners in various countries, which is interesting. And also based on project, I mean, the project I spoke about early on was a government, New South Wales government project that's targeting schools and these partners have come on board in a sense because of, you know, the spray painting console and, you know, the 3M's vision within Australia about, you know, getting new talent in. But it's vital because also, you know, it, it's it's important that partnering up with, with especially with industry leading players gives the technology and the solution credibility. You know, today it's all about, you know, we see so much videos online, there's social media is so heavily populated with all this great VR and augmented stuff and people sometimes get the wrong impression of what's real and what's not. You know, so I look at some of these videos and I'm thinking, really? I mean, that's a great video, but I'll tell you what, that's not even practical. Yeah. And this is where we blur the line. So, you know, partnering up with the leading players within an industry, you know what, it's important for us because it validates the solution, but also gives us traction. You know, we're not here to recreate anything. We're here to say, hey, we're going to develop a solution and a technology that can plug into existing um, solutions that are out there. You know, companies have worked very hard over the last decades to build relationships with collision shops and, you know, and that works well. You know, we don't want to disrupt that. All we want to say is, hey, we've got something here and it's exciting and it's new. We can plug it into the existing platform and everybody wins. So, Mario, the, 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 whole, the whole world of training face-to-face -face training, the way we educate ourselves. You know, we've seen it, whether it be in, in schools, going online. We, we, we've seen a massive, massive change in it. Do you, do you believe, do you believe we, this will change what we've experienced the last few months and, and, and marrying that with the technology? Will that change the way we do things forever, do you think? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's definite. Um, uh, you know, one of the probably most... Um, exciting parts of what's been happening recently with us is the amount of interest we've had from large-scale companies that are going out and traditionally servicing clients, you know, either from, uh, you know, uh, application, spray painting, um, equipment, whatever it may be. You know, that, that actually got disrupted a lot because they couldn't travel, they couldn't um, go out and they had to socially distance and people didn't want people coming into their facilities. 
So we've seen this huge interest of people saying, well, how do I do business remotely? You know, how do I, you know, service that client from the comfort of my office? You know, how do I give them the tools to be able to, um, you know, service that equipment? You know, how do I give them the tools to be able to train someone? You know, and that's been really, really uh, rewarding. And for us, it's actually pushed the boundaries because we've had, you know, major clients that are asking us to do stuff that we didn't even know was possible. You know, we had to come back and say in meetings, oh, we don't know, you know, we have to try because it's, you know, it's it's new territory for all of us. Some of these technologies, you know, especially within the virtual reality, we're actually pushing the boundaries and doing stuff within that virtual world that, you know, hasn't been done before. You know, if you're talking about from, you know, the way you apply to heat maps, to, um, you know, mixing paints, to to various things, you know, these are really, really, um, you know, areas that we're, we're pushing the boundaries and really getting some great results. That, and we're learning, we're coming back and saying, hey, we've done that. And it's great. You know, well, I think from our perspective, we're very lucky. And, you know, we have some really, really talented people. Um, and that's what drives these technologies. Yeah. You know, talent, you talk about talent from a trade perspective. But, you know, what drives technology these days? And it's talent. And it's a new talent. You know, going back when we were coming up, you hired on experience. You know, if you can get a panel beater or a technician with 10 years experience, wow. These days, that's gone out the door. A whole recruitment method has changed because you're not hiring on experience. You're hiring on capabilities and talent. You know, somebody that's a gamer that's pretty much self-taught that spends eight hours at work and spends another 10 hours at home technically still working, but just because that's their passion. You know, they're into this stuff. And these are the people that are driving you know, the evolving technologies within this immersive space. So, Mario, look, I've got one, one final question for you. I think it's it's almost a year ago since like, you and I met in SEMA, right? Yes, in the yeah. US, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and, you know, we at IBIS, part of what we do, and particularly part of this Leaning Light, is sharing with the, the global collision repair community, community know-how, technology, insights, learning. Um, what's important for you when working with Ibis? You've, been, you've worked with us on a few occasions now. Uh, you're a supporter of ours. Why is Ibis, in your mind, important to the industry? Look, it's important because like what I do in my space, being out there, being you know progressive and you know breaking down barriers, that's what I feel Ibis does. You know, you guys are always trying to do something different, you know, adapting. You've gone from, uh, hey, from holding events the way you guys done them to a, a virtual setting, which is still successful. You know, you're trying all new things, look at what we're doing today. And it's getting that message out. And I think platforms like what IBIS is doing is vital for our industry because people turn to IBIS to listen to what's new, what is happening. And if you can get that message across from technology to recruitment to COVID to process, whatever that is, that's a huge boost to the industry because these days people are so busy and working on cars and dealing with COVID, you know, they haven't got much time to tap into many things. You know, and IBIS being a leader in this space is one platform that people are listening to. So if we can use this platform to educate industry and keep them up to date with what's happening, I think it's vital. And I think IBIS is doing a great, great job there. And you know what? For me, I see IBIS as a future partner as we evolve and grow. I want to build on this relationship. And, um, you know, I think that's vital for everyone. Brilliant. Um, Mario, listen, that brings us uh, to the end of our, of our time today and our discussion. It's been fascinating to talk to you. Really great to hear about some of the, 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 the technology that's going to disrupt our industry and, and hopefully make us stronger in the future. So, so, Mario, a huge thanks. Good luck with all your projects and speak to you soon. Thanks, Thank Mario. You, Thank you so much. Well done, huh? Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, everybody... That concludes uh, this edition of, of IBIS Leading Lights. I hope you've enjoyed the discussion with Mario. Fascinating. If you want to uh, see this video or see more in the Leading Lights series, please visit ibisworldwide.com. See you next time.